Tribal Health and Human Services Department of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes is proud to present Good Medicine, a program dedicated to the wellness of the Flathead Nation. The mission is summarized quite simply, a healthier people, a stronger nation. We will strive to make Good Medicine a reliable source of ideas and information about health issues so that everyone can make informed decisions about their own lifestyle and health care. You will meet health professionals, tribal government and spiritual leaders, and interesting people from the tribal community discussing important health issues that profoundly affect us all. Hi, this is Good Medicine. I'm your host, Larry Pitts, and today we have a very, very distinguished guest. It's Mary Stranahan from the Medicine Tree. Mary, want to say hello to anybody? Hi, folks. I've never been on SKC before, and I'm pleased to, and honored to be on it. Well, I know Roy's going to talk to you later about, you know, sponsoring something, all the <laughs> jokes. <laughs> so, Mary, let's get started about the Medicine Tree just a little bit. You know, since you're the founder and organizer and developer of this wonderful idea up there, What's going on at um, the medicine tree nowadays? Well, um, we're getting uh, longer hours. We're going to start going from 9 in the morning till 7 at night, five days a week, starting next week. Um, also, Saturday mornings. We have. Is that uh, next week too? Starting next week. Okay, so don't call I this Saturday. Don't call this Saturday, call okay. the next Saturday. Uh, we have full lab and we have x ray. And we have a fully equipped um, urgent care type of room to take care of whatever come, walks through. Uh, we wouldn't classify ourselves as an emergency room, but we're just below that. And this is to try and capture some of the basic needs of this valley and supply um, people with that kind of service. Mm -hmm. It's obvious that people need after hours care. Um, and it's handy for people um, who are working five days a week to be able to come in on a Saturday or something like that. So we're doing that. Mm -hmm. um, the Medicine Tree just recently bought the Garden Wall Clinic, which is the other private clinic in St. Ignatius. Uh, that's Bill Farrell's. Mm -hmm. And we're going to keep that open so people have choice. And So Bill will still staff that one? Bill still stay there. And then the other physician that's in the pool there is Vic Davis, and okay. he's going to be going back and forth between the Medicine Tree and garden wall and then I've hired another physician Bob Shore uh, from Sheridan Wyoming mm -hmm. he's uh, he was the one who set up the whole emergency medical system of Wyoming so he comes from that type of background and he'll be at the medicine tree good credentials good credentials mm -hmm. and uh, so we're as physicians we've got four physicians for people to choose from we also have a nurse practitioner who specializes in obstetrics and gynecology, um, and she is doing specializing really right now in well women's health, mm -hmm. particularly around menopausal issues and teenage birth control and um, gynecological problems. So um, that's what we've got on a conventional basis for just what we call um, more conventional medicine. Yeah, that, that block of that. That care. block of those providers. Mm -hmm. We also have two psychologists, one who is full time, five days a week, specializes a lot in children, is doing some children's groups mm -hmm. at St. Ignatius High School. And then a woman who comes up from Hamilton on Fridays, uh, whose main interest, this isn't, she's a generalist as far as general counseling, does couples counseling and any sort of issue counseling. But her main interest, because she's a survivor of cancer, is to be working with people who are, uh, have that disease mm -hmm. and helping them with what growth needs to occur with that particular disease. Wow. So that's her first love, mm -hmm. and so we're trying to put a whole lot, as many patients as we can. Well, incorporate that into yeah. your care there. Right, and then we've got, and I suspect this is what the medicine trees has a reputation for, but we, we want to emphasize the conventional. We have two acupuncturists, mm -hmm. uh, one who does Chinese herbs and acupuncture, uh, 
one who does homeopathy, nutrition, and iridology and acupuncture. Um, then we have a massage therapist. We have a fully staffed physical therapy department done by uh, Donna Bainbridge. It's a separate uh, business called High Peaks, mm -hmm. but uh, she comes out of Mass General in Boston, uh, taught and practiced there for 20 years. I don't know of anybody in Montana who knows as much physical therapy as Donna does. Yeah, and I know Donna, and I can vouch for that. I, so. Whenever I hang out with her, I learn something. Every day I hang out with her. Even how to make knives. <laughs> That's true. Her husband makes knives. That's right. Um, we've incorporated another aspect right now. We have a, another entity called Spirit of Learning, which is a 501c3 nonprofit things separate from the medicine tree that is based on education and that's the the uh, entity that's bringing us the taekwondo for the children and bringing on these night uh, educational sessions mm -hmm. and they have um, put a woman named Jerry Bedell who's a master's in nursing as a holistic educator and we're what what we're finding is happening is patients will call and say I have such and such a disease, let's say ulcerative colitis, and I am doing this kind of stuff for conventional, but I want to add some other types of medicine. What would you recommend? And she walks the patient through that choice process mm -hmm. uh, and tries to help them, and it becomes their advocate as to, this is probably appropriate choices and these are probably not appropriate, and mm -hmm. bringing in the patient in educating the patient and then advocating for the patient's choices. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of exciting. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's a new idea. <laughs> it is, and I, actually the Spirit of Learning is gonna try and market this, mm -hmm. Jerry's service of holistic health educator to doctor's offices and uh, hospitals mm -hmm. around the state. So, but we get the services of it right now. And right. It's, it's very exciting. Oh yeah, it's just the new frontier again. It is, and she's forcing, as far as our providers go, she's forcing us to sit down and talk and say, okay, here's so-and-so with an ulcerative colitis problem. Let's keep them on these conventional medicines, but what if we added this modality or this mm -hmm. modality? And making us as providers work closer together and acknowledge each other's tools. Well, sort of what the tribe is trying to do with a lot of the Healthcare practitioners is it's called cultural awareness, mm -hmm. which is an, again another choice. Mm -hmm. So being sensitive to those areas in the person. Exactly, but more importantly, trying to get the patient to the level of sophistication where they can tell you, mm -hmm. "This is what I want, doc." That's the best healthcare of all. Mm. When the patient comes in and says, "This is what I want," and um, that means that they're fully educated. Right. I mean, you know this, mm -hmm. Larry, from your health problems. <laughs> oh, I have so. And you will get better health care right. when you're assertive. That's right. I don't care what provider you go to, you'll get better health care. Mm -hmm. And that's the major goal, I think, in anybody who's practicing medicine is the education of, of here's all your choices, mm -hmm. here's all your options. What do you want to do? Because you're captain of that ship. Mm -hmm. I'm not. That's right. You are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you want to do? It's my choice. That's right. My choice. And for so long in medicine, it hasn't been your choice. It's been the doctor's choice. Exactly. So. And um, I, that's that's the way I practice medicine. Is that they're the in charge. Mm -hmm. And I get there's certain people who are uncomfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Say, no, you're the doc. Just tell me what to do. And I say. I, I don't practice medicine that way. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that's kind of the directions mm -hmm. that we're going right now. We're, we're putting a lot of emphasis on conventional medicine mm -hmm. right now. We recognize we've got to serve the valley and the valley's needs. But in addition, adding on to that the educational stuff and the choice. Mm -hmm with the ultimate goal being patient empowerment. Mm -hmm. So you just said in the valley, this is what's happening for you guys. What do you think are the problems in the valley in healthcare? I think this valley's healthcare problems are not much different than anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, you have your acute problems like your infectious diseases and your trauma. Mm -hmm. And the uh, category of, oh my God, all of a sudden this has happened. And then you have your chronic diseases mm -hmm. and chronic health issues. And I think most of those relate to lifestyle choices. Mm -hmm. And um, and there there is where the emphasis on education is. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to get, that's the most difficult thing to do is to get somebody to make lifestyle changes. 
<laughs> but that's what we're talking about. We're talking about diet. We're talking about exercise. We're talking about uh, food choices. We're talking about family health type of things. What's the emotional health type of thing? Mm -hmm. And that's where chronic disease comes in. Right. We got enough <laughs> information now on immunology, thanks to the AIDS epidemic, that we know that the immune system is suppressed mm -hmm. by depression and stress. Mm -hmm. uh, we know this. Okay. So we need to deal with that. Mm -hmm. What happens when our immune system gets depressed? All sorts of stuff happens. And I think we can, ch you know, if we can get people to change lifestyles, we're going to cut down on medical costs a lot. Well, prevention. That's prevention right. Prevention goes a long way. Isn't and it? prevention isn't just a pap smear. Right. It's not just a mammogram. <laughs> prevention is really it's making before the pap choices. smear. It's That's before right. the mammogram. That's right. Doesn't preclude doing pap right. smears and mammograms. Mm -hmm. Those but are diagnostic not. tools, basically. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They're not prevention. Mm -hmm. so. so, how do you see your clinic? Like working with our, our fitness center in, in Ronan or El, in Elmo or in St. Ignatius. I think it just fits it to a T. If we, let's take an acute problem. Somebody gets into a car wreck, they have a fractured lower leg. Mm -hmm. It's not an uncommon injury in a car wreck. Um, they get through their hospitalization, they have their surgery, then they're going to need physical therapy. And they're mm -hmm. going to need very specialized physical therapy right. for a period of time, fairly short period of time. Um, and guided increase in strength. Once they've reached a plateau, then they need to go to the sports center. Mm -hmm. Again, patient empowerment. They can do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And if we get direct referral from physical therapy to sports center, then we get um, good help from the providers, whether they be a physical therapist or your sports physiologists or mm -hmm. your Our staff there your staff mm -hmm. um, that patient's going to do better mm -hmm. they're going to heal up better right it ties in perfectly compliancy tends to be better and that's right tends to be more complete that's so, right cool so so you're trying to work with the tribes and you're not you're not this separate entity out there that is totally i know you're not tribal health but you, you're trying to work with tribal health <laughs> larry i've been in this valley for 15 years and if you live in this valley you work uh, you work with tribal health mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's a significant amount of our clientele comes mm -hmm. from tribal health i like um a lot of their philosophy around trying to get to the ultimate issues of prevention. I support what they're trying to do. Um, of course we work with tribal health. <laughs> so I said I have it anymore. <laughs> so now what kind of problems are you seeing, you know, in your, your model, your modalities of holistic health in the US, even the valley? I would imagine they sort of run together a little bit. They certainly do. I don't see any difference between the US and the valley as far as our modalities. Mm -hmm. Our conventional health department doesn't run into any troubles um, because we're providing the same care as anybody else. Uh, what happens is when we're trying to when we're trying to blend the different modalities, when we try and blend acupuncture and antihypertensive medicine and, and or blend homeopathy and diabetes, then we run into troubles and we run into troubles in two areas. The first one is insurance reimbursement. There isn't there's very few insurances that reimburse for alternative health care. None of the insurance monies that come from the federal government, whether that be Indian Health Service, Medicaid, Medicare, uh, or Blue Cross, actually, which is not government, mm -hmm. none of that believes in using complementary medicine. Mm -hmm. And it actually, it's, a, it's an old hangover from a senator in Florida. <laughs> named Senator Pepper. Well, sounds like a hangover. Who believed, and he's dead, he's been dead now for 15 years, but he's the one who originally set up the guidelines for what Medicare would pay for. Mm -hmm. And he said, only an MD. Mm -hmm. That's it, everything else is quackery. So our, our reimbursement packages from the federal government are still under that myth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of, and, um, I don't see that that's going to change anywhere in the future. I think where we get acceptance of alternative health care is going to come out of the private industry mm -hmm. stuff. The other problem with the blending here in the valley or in the country, and I think this is changing very rapidly, is patient acceptance. Mm -hmm. There's certain people who think that this is woo-woo medicine or malarkey or quackery, and that's fine. I respect whatever their beliefs are, and we can work with 
Their opinion. Their <laughs> opinions. I mean, mm -hmm. that's patient empowerment is, uh, if you believe that homeopathy is woo-woo, that's fine. We mm -hmm. will work with your problem this way. Right. You won't do homeopathy um, then. <laughs> but what, and, and that's true around the country. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing is that public opinion is changing mm -hmm. very, very rapidly. You can't turn on the TV today and not find some program probably once a day talking about some of these types of therapies. Mm -hmm. And so I see the public opinion changing very rapidly. Mm -hmm. So for a positive mode in that. Yeah. It's, and I see the insurance industry sort of dragging their feet. So what role of education do you see in changing the industry? Well, I think um, I just got educated two weeks ago because okay. I went to New York City mm -hmm. and I talked to a guy who was a physician in the largest HMO in New York City and he is charged by that HMO to let in alternative health care. Okay. That's his charge. And he is let in with working with providers, acupuncture, yoga, chiropractic, and naturopathy. Mm -hmm. And they've set up um, advisory boards as to what's, what type of practice is allowed, what's in the parameters, what's out. And this is an HMO, it's called Oxford, mm -hmm. that insures two million people. So now a chunk the of whole people. <laughs> country is gonna be watching this. Right. Because an HMO, their bottom line is cost. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily care its cost. That's always been the wrap on HMOs. So we're going to be, all of us, including every insurance company is going to be looking at Oxford in a year from now and what's the cost? Mm -hmm. Have they cheapened the cost of health or have they made it more expensive mm -hmm. with that added choice? Mm -hmm. Now Which, my bias says it's going to cheapen it because you're getting into preventative health. Okay. But We'll have to wait and see. Well, and you have to see where that curve changes too. That's you know? right. I mean, and there's time. A year that. might not be realistically enough time for them to get a good evaluation of it. Right. But that's what you have to put up with when you're the new man on the block. That's true. You know, that's it's, it's true. sort of that. How can the consumer of holistic holistic health change? You know, the the reimbursement patterns that are already set. It's hard right now. I think it takes us, I, I would assume as a, con well I'm a consumer of the health mm -hmm. industry and I don't understand what the heck's going on. I don't understand uh, the IPO, the PPO, the HMO, the various and the sundry maneuverings that's going on in Montana as to controlling health care. It's very confusing right now. Um, but we all need to be squeaky wheels and mm -hmm. say, this is the type of care I want. Mm -hmm. And I think um, we can point to experiments like Oxford. We can tell our insurance agents mm -hmm. here in Montana, did you know that New York City is doing this? Did you know that the city of Seattle is paying for naturopathy? They mm -hmm. have a whole clinic that they pay for all their employees if they choose to go there mm -hmm. that can get naturopathic care. Mm -hmm. Did you know this stuff? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't either. Now, Kings County in Seattle um, was the first large agency to go ahead and do this. So they're a year into it. Now, mm -hmm. we ought to be getting some numbers out of them. What is the cost? Because you can't argue with these guys until you have dollar signs. Mm -hmm. And so, isn't it amazing how what we're talking about right now for the national model is always cost? It's not care. That's true. That's well. <laughs> that, that's we've got a line. how many trillion in, trillion dollar industry? Mm -hmm. And I was listening on the radio the other day. I was saying, um, you know, we've got a trillion dollar industry or three trillion dollar industry of healthcare, and our health is worse. Mm -hmm. And when you compare U.S. statistics with some of the other countries around the the world, we're actually going backwards, mm -hmm. and yet we're spending more dollars. Now, okay. what's going on here? Why? Mm -hmm. Greed or? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, greed you got to put in there. Okay. We also have very high tech uh, diagnostic stuff that costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. should, we, should we be rationing the use of that? Probably. Mm -hmm. Probably we're overusing them. Okay. Probably some sort of managed care decision making model is obviously going to come out of this. I don't know where it is, but. Yeah. Um, we're not doing very good as a, this industry is not doing its customers a very good job. Right. You know, and I guess as, as I sit back as a consumer, 
and I look at the changes that are going to affect my children, you know, we need to look at all the modalities, all the models, and I guess when I, I look at the model of healthcare, I keep goes back to the education again. Absolutely. And do you, do you see, I guess I, you talked about the holistic educator in your clinic. Mm -hmm. How else can we educate? Well, um, there's stuff on TV. What, what, where do we get education now? We mm -hmm. get education visually mostly. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be getting it through TVs and magazines mm -hmm. and a little bit of auditory with the radio. And so I think our communication industry needs to be putting together some packages too. Mm -hmm. That's where we're going to get that education. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't be just dependent on the health educator at a clinic. All right. What about the what about the school system? Mm -hmm. If we're really talking about preventative health care, I passed three fast food signs from St. Ignatius to here. And I know that fast foods cause heart disease, gallbladder disease, atherosclerosis, and probably cancer. Mm -hmm. I passed three fast food restaurants. <laughs> well, that too, that too. So where are we going to, I mean, the school systems have to do this too. Mm -hmm. If we can get our kids really into taking care of themselves, mm -hmm. then we've solved all of, you know, nine-tenths of the problems. Right. Now, you know, what we're talking is a lot of theory right now. I know. Now, how do we practically do that? I'm going to put you on, you know, Here Mary, on the reservation? I'm, put, I'm putting you on the fence. I'm going to solve the world's problems yeah, right now. You got it. You got it. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> you hear this on the good medicine, you know. This is coming. Um, well, I, all I can say is what, what we can do is do a high-class job of education because mm -hmm. that's what the practice of medicine is, mm -hmm. is education. Mm-hmm. Unless you're comatose, we're into an education mode. Have you ever been to the Cooper Clinic in Dallas, Texas? No, but I've read a lot about it. Yeah, it's a pretty neat place because you never see anybody out of shape there. That's right. 300 employees, and they're all in shape. They practice what they do. They, 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 they walk, walk their, their talk. Walk. That's right. They walk it, and they really put it there. You know, I see your clinic, you know, like we said, it might have had a bad rap, but one time, as you, know, as you said, the woo-woo place. Mm -hmm. And I, excuse me, I see you going towards this modality of, of true health. Now, how do you see yourself working with the tribe in the future? I look at the tribe as a wonderful way of, uh, and this whole valley of pro providing a model of how medicine ought to be practiced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I see the tribe as an ally in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, that's where I see the medicine tree and the tribe working together. And how does the average person in, in, uh, integrate this into their, this modality of, um, of health care? Well, that's because they're in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. They can choose, pick and choose whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to try and encourage them mm -hmm. to um, use as many choices as possible. Okay. But bottom line, get them in the driver's seat. So that, let them know that they're in control. That's right. And these are their choices. Um, now, what sort of things are going on in your clinic? I understand um, earlier with one of my um, guests, we talked about that uh, for physical therapy from now on, it has to come from your clinic or um, St. Luke's in Ronan. That's, a, that's in response to the tribe trying to, I mean, they have limited resources, mm -hmm. and they were trying to make their buck go the farthest by making it efficient, and that's what they're going to be trying to do in the whole field of medicine. So they took bids from various physical therapists around the, the valley and in Missoula and Kalispell, and this was the most efficient way to do it mm -hmm. for best bang for the buck mm -hmm. for the tribal members. So right. we, um, I think because Don is a great physical therapist and she's smart, she's a good negotiator, mm -hmm. we're part of that contract. As well as Bruce McMillan, we got to put Bruce, Bruce in there. Bruce so. McMillan up in, at yeah. St. Luke's is a great physical therapist. You bet. So now, when you see this type, type of thing happen in the valley, um, are you sold out on that idea? Are you sold uh, out to the, you know, for the tribes as, you know, since this is a tribal program we're talking about, do you see yourself as expanding those areas for them in other fields too? Yeah, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I ultimately, as far as um, as a non-tribal member, I would see the 
trying to get the tribe to pay for some, what, what we've been talking about theoretically mm -hmm. is true preventative care. What if we contracted with the tribe to put on, here's a class on how you prevent heart disease. Mm -hmm. And we worked with 15 to 19 year olds or something like right. that. Right. How do we change the model that, um, that holistic health is, is whacked out, you know, it's um, woo as you call it. How are we gonna do that? I think experience. I, somebody needs to experience it. Somebody needs to come in with uh, a uh, anterior cruciate ligament tear and having had surgery and find out that acupuncture can help the pain okay. and therefore promote the to, rapidity uh, of healing. So in other words, just to experience it and say, yeah. there it is, it yeah. does work. Yeah. Well, Mary, we're just out of time. Well, so, you know, it's been 20 and a half great minutes. I've really enjoyed you to being my guest. Well, Larry, I, I would, really thank you for letting me come on. I'd love to have you back on here in the future. And uh, for those out in TV land, thank you for being aboard and we'll see you next week. Thank you much. Bye now. Good Medicine is your program. We hope you watch this and subsequent programs to stay informed about your health care. And we'd like to hear from you about how we're doing. Please direct any comments or suggestions you have to us. You can reach us at...